So this is the, the probably the sentence starter that every school kid could tell you the ending to because for some reason it's been brainwashed into our, our education system and even cartoons and things. So it always starts out with, for every action force, there is an yeah, an equal but opposite reaction force. And it seems like a grade two kid could tell you that, and I'm not quite sure when the first time was that I heard it. But it was a long time ago. Does anybody remember the first time they heard it? Really, grade 11? Every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. Yeah, that's why you don't push people, because they always push you back. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, this is really off topic because my chemistry class is talking about it. Which one's faster, gravity or the speed of light? I'm not going to talk to you right now about that. <laughs> We're going to talk about action reaction forces. I won't let you do that to me today. All right. So, let's say that we have a little person sitting on top of a box with, with his hands on his knees. Oh, and you, can, you can't tell from the picture that this is a boy, but it's a boy. I'm not gonna add in any of the details that would make it more clear, but this is a boy sitting on a box, okay? And this boy is sitting on a box, and the box is sitting on the earth. Le petit point. Je ne connais aucun mot en français, so it's just this little guy on a box. <laughs> you just said words. <laughs> is that what I said? Oh, okay. Anyway, um, so there's this guy sitting on a box, and the box is sitting on the, the, uh, the earth. I want to talk about action reaction forces. What's the, what are the action reaction forces that are acting on the little boy? I go. Okay, so I've got. I could say that there's force due to gravity acting on. You know what? I'm going to call him B for boy. Force of gravity acting on the boy. What else is acting on the boy? Yeah. Normal force. You know, I could say there's a normal force, but if I call this uh, this box here, I don't call it box because B is for boy. I'm going to call it a cube. C is for cube. I could say that it's the normal force acting up on the boy, but can I also say it's the force of the cube acting up on the boy? Really, that's just another way in this case of sort of you know, decoding and giving lip service to Newton's third law. This is the force of the cube acting on the boy. Now if there's a force of the cube acting on the boy, what must be true about forces acting on the cube? Yeah? Force of the boy acting on the cube. Yeah, force of the boy acting on the cube. That's one of the forces acting on the cube. Force of the cube act or the boy acting on the cube, for sure. What else is acting on the cube? Remember, this cube is on Earth. Gravity acting on the cube? Yeah, that's one. So we could say there's force the gravity of gravity acting on the cube, also downwards. Now, what, what else is keeping this cube from crashing to the center of the Earth? Yeah. Force of the Earth acting on the cube? Yeah, force of the Earth acting on, on the cube, otherwise known as the normal force, right? But we could say that there's force of the earth acting on the cube, E for earth, I'm not going to write out the whole word, and commonly called the normal force. Now the fact that there's a boy sitting on top of this cube, does that increase the normal force or decrease it? For the normal force acting on the cube, that is. Yeah, yeah, increase it, because the, the earth has to push up that much harder to keep the cube from falling through to the center of the earth, right? I said that there was a force of gravity acting on, a, on the boy, and there's a force of gravity acting on the cube. Do you think it's also reasonable to say that if this is the center of the Earth, obviously this is not the scale, this isn't the Earth, this maybe is more like the, the little prince, but if this was the center of the Earth, if this was our scale, could I also say that there's a force of the boy, sorry, I should say, yeah, the boy acting on the Earth? Can you see that that might be true? Yeah, is the, isn't the boy uh, gravitationally attracting the center of the Earth towards the boy? Really? I mean, it does make our labeling system a little bit more difficult. I'd have to say, um, instead of G, I might say Earth, 
acting on boy so that earth on boy and boy on earth would be you know, reciprocals of one another in terms of action-reaction forces. Is this the only force that's acting on the center of the Earth? Yeah. The cube? Yeah, the cube too. I could say there's a force of the cube acting on the Earth. So a force of boy on Earth, that's one half of this action-reaction force pair. The other half of that action-reaction force pair is the force of gravity on the boy, because really the gravity is because of the mutual attraction between the Earth and the boy. And then here we've got force of gravity on the cube, and force of the cube on Earth, those guys would be reciprocal force, action-reaction force pairs. But there's always this, this action-reaction force pairing. <coughs> I want to think about something that's a little bit smaller scale. Um, we've got a boy. Why don't we have a lady? And so this is, again, obviously a lady. There's the lady. Can you see it now? So there's a lady, and I'd like the lady to be pushing boxes. Box one and box two, because hey, why not? Okay. And if you can't tell that she's a lady, then I'm sorry, I can't help you. So we've got force. This woman uh, pushing on box one and bo box two. I've got one, two. I'm gonna la label the lady. L, big capital L for lady. I'll put it right on her head so we can't miss it. Okay. And now we'd like to draw three free body diagrams. One for the lady, one for box one, and one for box two. And I'm not going to worry about them being terribly artistic. I'm going to make them all the same size roughly because the size doesn't really matter in this case. And now I'd like to add in some forces. What are the forces that are acting on? Let's assume that this is a frictionless scenario. What are the forces that are acting on box two? Let's let's deal with the verticals first. What are the vertical forces? Yes, sir. Sure. So we could say that there's a normal force. I mean, we could say the the normal force acting on mass two if we want to be specific. Because by the time this is all said and done, we'll have three normal forces, one for each object. So I'm going to say the normal force for mass two. The gravitational force for mass 2. Maybe we'll do that for all of them. Let's deal with all the y components first. Normal force for mass 1. Gravity for mass 1. And I guess the woman isn't going to fall to the center of the earth either. So we'll say normal force on the lady. And force due to gravity acting on the lady. Now let's think in the x direction. What are the, the x... The force X force. That sounds like a comic book. What are the X forces that are acting on mass two? Yeah? Pardon me? Box one. Box one acting on box two? Yeah. So and based on your hand gestures, I'll say this is force one acting on two act in that direction, right? Okay, so I, we should have really defined a reference frame. We should be able to refer to the direction specifically. So to the right, to the left, I'm gonna make to the right positive, to the left negative, up and down. So it's going to be force of 1 on 2 acting to the right on mass 2. If that's the action force, where should the reaction force be applied? Mass again? Yeah. And attached to what box? Uh, two. Nope. Force of 2 acting on 1. Which box is it applied to? Ali? Box 1. Yeah, and if it's a reaction force, it's going to be in the opposite direction, and it's going to point that way. And it's actually right in the name. Force of box 2 acting back on box 1. So if it's acting on box 1, it has to be attached to box 1. This one here, force of box 1 acting on box 2, this is box 1 bumping up against box 2, applying a force through the contact surface where they bump up against each other. Now there's another force that's attached to box two. What's the other force? There's one acting to the right on box two. What's the one that we're missing here? Yes? Yeah. So we could call it force of the lady acting on box one. And these these uh, are all supposed to be subscripts. I'm just making them a little bit bigger so that you can read them nicely. But all these things beside the Fs are subscripts. 
So we've got our, all of our forces on the two boxes. Now we're actually sort of, we're at a bit of a loss because uh, the force of L on one had to come from somewhere. So w what's, the, uh, what's the missing force? What's the action reaction force that goes along with force of lady on one? Yeah? Um, the force of one and lady on boxes. Yeah, so there's a resisting force here. So we could say that there's a force of one, or a reaction force rather, force of one acting back on the lady. And there's actually one more action reaction force that we're missing. What's pushing this woman forward? Don't tell me magic. The floor. Yeah, you know, if you've ever, maybe you've, you've thought about this before, but if you have a car and the car is, well, it's not obvious which end is the front end, maybe. Here we have a car. I'll put a spoiler on the back so it's obvious. If you have a car with wheels spinning, the wheels spin in this direction to push the car forward, right? So the, the wheels push on the road that way. But if the road doesn't have any traction capability, the car's not going to go anywhere. That also means that the car won't be pushing on the road, really. It'll just be spinning out. Like if you put grease on the road, then the car can't push on the road. But if you don't put grease on the road, the car pushes backwards on the road. What does the car do? Or what does the road do? Yeah, so we could say, really what drives cars forward is the force of the road acting on cars. Like when you drive down New Street, you drive down any major streets around this city, the road is actually propelling you forward. It's only doing that because you pushed it first, but it couldn't push you forward if there wasn't some sort of attraction or friction involved, right? So there is a reaction force there. So if, if we're really wanting to be good about this whole Newton's third law thing, we should talk about a force of the, let's call it, uh, what do you want to call it? I don't want to call it ground because that's the same as gravity. You want to call it earth? Okay. Earth acting on the lady. And by that, I, I really mean friction, right? Where she's getting traction here, so she's able to, to get a grip on the floor. So the earth acting on the lady, because she's pushed on the earth, and the earth is pushed back on her. So we've got some free body diagrams here. And there's actually a lot of action-reaction forces just by pushing two boxes. I mean, just standing here right now, just standing here in this room, I've got a normal force and a gravitational force, like the boy on the box. Um, but if I want to push anything where there's multiple bodies for a system, there's going to be contact forces between those things. Not only that, the person that's doing the pushing, pushing has to get some traction, and that's an action-reaction force. Um, the other thing is, if I had, and you don't have to draw this, I'm just going to add this. What if this person had been a person that was dragging, you know, dragging two objects, and I talk about this in grade 11 sometimes. If you're dragging two objects, you might apply a force, you know, as a person pulling these things forward. But the force obviously is going to get transferred to the second box, so the force gets transferred through a rope. What's the name of that force? The tension force. Now the thing is, when we do all this math, we maybe don't come up with a force called tension. Maybe you want to call it that, maybe you don't. But I could draw a free body diagram for this particular box, and I'm going to draw it over top of my illustration. The tension force that I would label here, if this was box one and this was box two, I would probably call this force of one acting on two. And so I could go through and find force of one acting on two using some mathematical processes that I want to explain in a few minutes. And maybe there's a force due to friction, you know, force due to kinetic friction acting on mass two. Maybe this guy has a, an applied force acting on it. But acting backwards on mass one would, would be what force? Force of two on one? Yeah. So I'd have force of two on one there. And what you would find is the magnitude of force of one on two and the magnitude of force of two on one will always end up being the same. And the magnitude of those two guys being the same means that that's what we call the tension force. Okay, Whether it's force of one on two or force of two on one, their magnitude should be equal, but their direction should be opposite. And that would be called the tension force. And some people choose to write it as a big capital T. I'm going to choose to write it with the subscripts. And I'm even going to mostly choose to write it with force of one on two and force of two on one. Because I really want to give proper lip service to Newton's third law being the thing that's at play here. Everybody okay with that? <laughs>